Uh, kia ora, everyone. Uh, thank you for that, Bobby. I'm not even going to try and match Bobby in terms of te reo or matauranga because I'm a former fluent speaker, but um, failed my level three external Māori exams and didn't just fail, I failed in spectacular fashion. Once I found out the questions were in Māori, the probability of passing that went skyrocketing down. Uh, so who am I? Uh, for those of you who don't know, because I have a habit of not introducing myself to really anyone half the time, um, I'm talking to Metoro. I'm a lecturer in media design, so I'm up on the fourth floor. Uh, former alumni from here, and I've been teaching for the past three years. And like uh, Rebecca alluded to, uh, my mother and father, mother is from Ngāti Pirao, she's from Whangara Mai Tafti, 2007 and 2017 uh, Matatini champions, for those who need to know. Um, my father is Cook Island, he's from Rarotonga and Moke or Akatoko Manawa, uh, and they met in the 80s at some point, and I came along a bit later. Um, I am born and bred in Wellington, but we spent five years in the UK, so mum and dad moved over uh, with me and my brother at the time, and they came back with me and my brother and my sister. And then from about the ages of 10, right up until now, I've been uh, Wellington, uh, born and bred pretty much, Newtown, Lyle Bay, Rongatai College, and then Vic Uni. Uh, are we still called Vic Uni? Is that still open to debate? Um, so why am I here? What's my next slide? Yeah, what am I working on? Um, so last year I applied for a, a small grant through the Matauranga Māori Research Fund, MMRF, um, and I only heard about it because Doug sent a pretty brief email, hey, you should check this out, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. Had a look at it, uh, applied for it, and much to my surprise, we actually got it. So the project that we're working on it's officially designated title is Project Heidinger. That is the title you'll find in the database. That's the title I put on the actual um, application. That is not the title I've referred to it by for the last eight months, uh, but that is what it is. So for those of you who don't know, Heidinger is journey, or at least sort of the equivalent to journey uh, in the Maori language. The reason it's called that is because it's basically Zelda of the Pacific. So I didn't mention this earlier, and I should have, uh, in media design, I teach design predominantly. Sometimes I teach uh, video production, but most of the work I do here is with students and game design. Uh, the Legend of Zelda is a very popular series by Japanese developers Nintendo. Uh, it's got a 30-year history. It is sort of uh, in the medium, one of the, the measuring points. It's the staple of uh, the medium itself, or one of them. Um, the unofficial title is Brown Zelda. So I, along with the other person who works on this, always call this Brown Zelda. I completely forgot it was called Project Heidinger until I had to fill out the um, six month review and I had to dig back and find out what I'd called it. So unofficially, it's Brown Zelda. Um, so Legend of Zelda, like I said, is an adventure game. It's a long running series. Uh, the simple premise is you play as a young boy called Link uh, more often than not, some sort of event kicks uh, things into action, which requires you to travel uh, this expansive world, uh, go save a few people, find some exclusive or elusive items, I should say, uh, and go on these you know, fantastic adventures, whether that be uh, by land, by air or sea, whatever the case, um, generally you're just in this fun playground where you get to you know, explore, much like an eight-year-old wandering along the beaches of the East Coast. Uh, so it has quite an appeal to me, even though I didn't play it when I was younger. It came to me when I was a, a bit older in my teens. Um, but it's, I guess, resonated with me for some time. It's my absolute favorite. And I will defend this game to the death, regardless of the amount of flaws it has. So, like I said, it's this expansive fantasy. It gives you this great world to explore. And for the longest time, uh, I thought that the you know, expansive, rich history and culture, not just of Māori, but of the Pacific in general, um, not to sound exploitative, but as a, a great pool to draw from and, you know, create these new worlds and fantastic adventures. So I guess we'll go into this a bit more, but we have, you know, the myths that everyone remembers reading, uh, The Taming of the Sun by Maui, Paikia riding into Whangara on his, uh, his whale after his brother kicked him off the boat. Um, and then you have, you know, even further than that, the Chiefs of Rarotonga and the, the wars that I've heard about, but I've never found any, like, academic anything to back them up, but I've heard them, I guess, via word of mouth. Uh, and then the mysteries of Pacific, Easter Island, those sorts of things. There is just a dense and rich history and culture, um, I guess, waiting to be tapped and waiting to be explored by, you know, users all over the world. 
Now, I'm not the first person to try this. I'm not even remotely the first person to try this. It's been tried many times uh, with very, very mixed results. It seems whenever anyone says, we'll take something Pacific or Māori, it gets mixed in with Mongolian and, you know, Southern Asia and Indonesia and all those sorts of things. So in the early 2000s on your left, you have a game called the Mark of Cree. I remember seeing this when I was about nine, going, that looks pretty cool. And I looked closer and I went, I'm sure we didn't have swords and I'm pretty sure we didn't have fur boots and I'm pretty sure men didn't have moko kawai. Um, so yeah, that left me with, with mixed feelings. Uh, in the middle is a tato, which is the Samoan word for tamoko. I know for a fact that Samoan tattoos don't look like that. That looks like the side of Mike Tyson's head. But that was, you know, their interpretation of Pacific culture, along with the fact that there were Maori in the game who managed to speak Malay, Indonesian, and almost everything other than Maori. Uh, and then some of the more recent examples on your far right. Um, I can't remember what the game's called, Apex and something else. Again, they've tried to take sort of Maori culture. So the one above, um, his name is Mahuta, and he's supposed to be a Maori cyborg from the future, but he looks much more Native American. The patterns don't really uh, align with at least what I know Tamoko to look like. He's also voiced by a Native American, which doesn't bode well for what the developers were doing. And then below that is a game called Apex, which... Uh, found themselves in hot water recently because uh, someone made connection between the outfit and the mongol mob, which probably isn't the association Māori necessarily want. But like I said, mixed outputs. That's not to say it's all been bad. Uh, a recent game called Civilization VI uh, released sort of a, a new patch of content where you played as a character called Kupe and you kind of led the uh, the migration through the Pacific. Far more accurate, they developed that uh, in line with Māori, so they were actually involved in the uh, development process. Um, as you can see, they accurately depicted us all as six foot six, muscle bound, ripped to shreds, specimens uh, of human beings, which I thought was very accurate, but uh, far closer. So it's getting better, it's improving, but it's still only really barely being tapped on. Um, now, you may be wondering why I'm doing this. Why with games? Personally, and this is through my experience, uh, media is sort of the gateway. It's the gateway to, you know, wider knowledge, knowledge you won't necessarily find. There's no way you're going to find me looking through a book when I was eight about Maori mythology. But if you presented me with a game or a cartoon or a TV show, I was going to do that easily. So these are the sort of things uh, that I remember coming up with. Um, Josie Wales, I loved Westerns. My dad loved Westerns, so... By default, I had to watch them. Uh, but Native American culture, even though not always accurately depicted or well depicted in some of those early American films, um, introduced me to something that I probably wouldn't have come across that much otherwise. Anime, Japanese stuff, very cool, especially when you're young, it looks really cool. Um, but that led me into sort of feudal Japan history to an extent, um, interest in their designs and their culture. And I know I'm not alone in that. And then if you asked anyone particularly from my age, you happen to go to Rongatai College about Greek or Roman mythology, chances are what they're telling you is from that game, God of War II. Uh, they did not read uh, the books. I know that for certain. But like I said, uh, media is a gateway to, to wider things. Uh, and though it may not necessarily, you know, start them on the, the path to learning those things in depth, at least it exposes them to a culture that they may not necessarily have found outside of that. So, Coming back to um, the actual project itself and moving away from, I suppose, the context of it. Uh, my co-developer, technically he's a research assistant on paper, but he's a co-developer. Um, Hunter Mulder and I got together. We tried to break down what sort of the, <clears throat> I suppose, the key features of a, a Zelda game were, the framework. Tried to understand how they structure it, why they structure it in that way, and then take that structure and begin to build our own content on top of that. Um, I don't think I have much more for the slides, so we'll move ahead. At this point, I'm not sure what the slides are because, as you may have noticed, I was a bit late to the Mihifakato. This is why. Um, okay. So I'm actually winding the clock back a bit further. Uh, back in 2013, when I was still a student, uh, a small team comprising of myself and three other people, one Maximilian, two Adrian, and three uh, Marina, built 
more or less a prototype for what we're trying to do now. So this was our 243 class. Uh, it was called Rangi. You play as Rangi, who, as you can see, is in the proud colors of his East Coast Rugby Union jersey, the blue and white. Um, and the premise was uh, basically stripped completely from God of War. Tumatoinga got angry about something. It, it was very vague, but it was necessary just to, to build the game. Um, no, there's never been plants like that in New Zealand, but we took some creative liberties, as you can see. Uh, but essentially, this was the blueprint for what we'd be doing uh, seven years later. So Maximilian and myself got together. Um, he is now a modeler at, uh, at Weta, Weta Digital, which means he's very busy. So this is sort of the beginning of last year, and we started trying to get the project in motion again. Um, you'll notice that we didn't go with that style because it takes too long. Uh, neither of us have that much time and we can't build things efficiently considering we have a 12-month window of the grant. So we started doing some sketches. Um, we started trying to find a way to maintain, uh, I guess, identifiable traits of the culture that we're you know, drawing from while also streamlining it for efficiency and legibility. So it needs to be clear that what you're playing is Maori culture, but we can't necessarily capture all the detail and nuance that may necessarily be in there. Uh, so this is where I was at um, mid to late last year. I coded this myself, and my code is a bit like my Māori. It's pretty broken, pretty poor. I probably failed the exam for programming. Um, so this is all very janky, and by janky, this is basically being held together by tape and glue. Uh, it's not particularly stable. It breaks all the time. Fortunately... Uh, with the fund, I was able to bring Hunter on board, who's a far more capable programmer than I am. And we started to scrap all the work I'd done and basically rebuild the same thing, but in a much more stable manner. So as I said, uh, we stepped away from that simply because of efficiency. Uh, Maximilian couldn't keep up with the project. That sounds bad. He was too busy. He was too busy to stay on board. So we couldn't, um, we couldn't keep working together, although he'll come back a bit later which means I started handling all the visual assets and the animation, and I opted for simplicity and speed. Uh, I can build that very quickly. I cannot build that at all. That would take me the amount of time we have the fun for. Uh, so we start moving forward. We start developing assets, and we start laying down the framework. And by framework, I mean having everything functional. So like I said, uh, we can do things quickly here. Simple polygons, simple shapes, uh, low poly count. What that means is low poly count, not much detail. You try and keep it as minimal as possible while still getting uh, character and expression through, I suppose. So I start making different characters. We get different expressions. Um, you've never seen a human look like that, but in a game and from a distance, it works. Um, we start animating. We start getting things going. This is during the lockdown, actually. Um, as terrible as COVID has been and will continue to be, it proved pretty fortuitous for us because it gave us a month where I didn't have to teach and I could, you know, dedicate some time uh, to this. So we started building this. Um, and then we started making a list of not necessarily the things that make the culture unique, even though it kind of is, uh, more the things that we really wanted to see. Obviously, it's higher heart. Combat's kind of bread and butter in a lot of games. One thing we really didn't want to do, and I suppose because of our, um, our target demographic is, is younger, clearly, a lot of the games I pointed out earlier that had muddled the culture to some extent had the very uh, violent, savage kind of thing going, which is a trait in games and not just in games, but in media in general. So we wanted to steer away from that, and make it more accessible uh, while being as accurate as we could. Um, exploration is key. People who go sailing across the Pacific probably have some kind of bone for exploration. Uh, Ponamu finding ways to incorporate uh, the value of that. Uh, pa, obviously, we need terrain and architecture. Sailing was a big thing we really wanted to do because, like I said before, uh, as much as the focus was initially Māori, and it is the Mātauranga Māori Research Fund, I'm still Cook Island, and I want to branch out beyond that. Uh, and I have a whole other side of the family that I have to appease as well, so you, you all understand that. Um, so Tonga, Samoa, Cook Islands, Fiji, I have peers from those uh, other islands, one sitting over there, have to appease them as well. And then sort of the mythical elements, um, 
the Maero Mountain Giants. Again, we had to tone things down because the Mountain Giants were apparently cannibals. Um, at least in the law, they are cannibals and in, in the mythology. We don't necessarily need our, you know, 10 to 12 year old playtesters encountering uh, mountain men cannibals. Uh, the same with the Patu Paiarehe, who are sort of mountain fairies or elves. Uh, they used to come in to villages in the night and sneak out with children or women. Again, we don't necessarily need that element in the game either. So as accurate as possible, but creative liberties where necessary. Uh, and then Poakai, Giant Eagles. Giant Eagles sounds really cool. So we're really going to try and weave that in if we can. And then we found out something interesting. The only indigenous land mammal is our bats, which really surprised me and really limited our options for mammal animals while uh, maintaining accuracy for our game. So... Where are you? This is where we were a few months ago. Um, you're able to run around, you're able to explore certain areas, you're able to talk to clones of yourself. The only problem is Hunter programmed these and they all quote lines from The Godfather at the moment, so they all speak Italian. Um, again, that's subject to change. Um, so you can play through this. Obviously, it looks very rough, but from a I suppose game design perspective or game developers perspective, uh, the foundation is there, the fundamentals are there, all the moving parts are in order. We just haven't uh, put the paint job on quite yet. Uh, we have enemies or with varying uh, temperaments, different kinds of behaviors, uh, and you're able to engage with them in different ways. Uh, I probably had a slide in here somewhere about the progression of, of Zelda games. Like I said, you explore areas and you know engage with uh, enemies and those sorts of things the general and we call this core loop in game design the general core loop as the player you run around in areas uh, you gain new items and those new items open up even more areas and it just continually works that way um, and I'll skip forward again now I should probably talk about the premise <laughs> So in trying to weave Maori culture and Pacific culture together, we initially were just going to have you play through myths. The only problem is we don't want to change the myths. So what we've tried to figure out is a way to have a character act as a passive bystander, the person who just happened to be at all the important events, uh, but got written out of history. So this 12 month period is about us developing a prototype, a half hour section of the game where you help Maui defeat the sun. So this is our sort of sun boss template at the moment where he throws a whole lot of fire at you and you have to avoid it uh, and get in hits where you can uh, so this will be sort of the end of the game should we get to it hopefully we will full disclosure we're a bit behind um, like i said we really wanted to make sailing a big part so at the moment we have our sailing prototype kind of set up uh, you're able to take your, your waka or your vaka, depending on which island you leave from, uh, and go between different locations. Ideally, that will just open things up for us and we can start. Again, it sounds exploitative, but start taking different elements of the different islands and you know, introducing, hopefully, this new audience to these uh, brand new, fantastic things. Uh, and then this is where we're at right now. Where is the mouse? Uh, we've started building the par, and this will act as sort of the central hub that the player explores out from. So this is where they'll get their, uh, their first initial items, um, be given sort of their first bit of exposition, their first bit of story. So I haven't talked about this, and I really should, um, but part of the fun was that we would consult with uh, Derek Lardelli, <clears throat> who recently became a knight. Fortunately, he's my mom's first cousin, so getting a hold of him isn't particularly difficult, um, but he doesn't respond to his work emails. He only responds to his phone. So he will be acting sort of as our, our consultant, making sure that A, uh, we're depicting things accurately, uh, where we're taking creative liberties there in spaces that we're allowed to do so, uh, and hopefully giving his nephew the all clear um, for the project. The main thing we really want him to cover off is unlike those previous games where they kind of muddled things, we want to make sure that what we're showing is uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a good depiction, although ideally it's an enjoyable one, but a fair depiction. It's 
true to, I don't want to say the source material, but it's true to a source. Uh, and hopefully it creates, you know, an engaging space for new users. Now that ends the talk. And I guess the general reason for this project um, is, I had a point that I was thinking about while Bobby was talking and it's just completely left me. Um, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> okay, I think I might have said it earlier. Um, oh, no, here it is, I found it. The influences that kind of shaped me and led me to where I am and inform my work uh, the entire time, and this is from the first year I was here at uni, uh, my goal has been to recreate those influences and experiences for someone else. And it's been pretty simple. Um, doing it in this particular manner and drawing from my own culture and heritage uh, just happens to be a bonus. So that concludes my talk. Thank you very much.